The new missile is called Khuramshar, the name of a city in southern Iran, which was occupied by the invading Saddam Hussein army in the autumn of 1980. Amir Ali Hajizadeh, commander of the Islamic Revolution Guards Corps Aerospace Force, said the missile can carry multiple warheads. The peculiarities of this missile is that instead of carrying one warhead it can hit several targets with several warheads. Hajizada told reporters on the sidelines of the parade marking the start of Iraq's invasion of Iran on September 22, 1980. The missile is able to carry warheads up to 1,800 kilometers, as Izada added. He also said the missile is more tactical and smaller in comparison to other ballistic missiles developed by the Defense Ministry. Since the Quram Shah is based on the intermediate-range Masudan, which has an estimated range of 2,500 to 4,000 kilometers, analysts have questioned why Iranian officials mark the missile's maximum range at 2,000 kilometers. One hypothesis focuses on potential Iranian modifications. IRGC commander of the Aerospace Division, Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizadeh stated that the Iranian variant has become smaller in size and more tactical, which may explain the missile's decreased range. Five. A second theory asserts that Iranian officials do not want to raise concern in Europe about their missile program, and thus are purposely underestimating the range. I am not sure why the Iranians are lying about the range, one US official told Fox News. I think they don't want to piss the Europeans off. 6. Despite its clear connection to the North Korean Masudan, Iranian officials nonetheless claim that the Quram Shah was indigenously developed. During the September 2017 unveiling of Quram Shah, Brigadier General Hajizadeh asserted, Today, our country's missile power is completely domestic from concept to product. There are no sections in these areas that are not indigenous. 7. The Quram Shah was first reportedly test-fired on January 29, 2017, flying about 950 kilometers before exploding. Eight, it was fired from a test site near Semnun, 225 kilometers east of Tehran. Commenting anonymously, a U.S. military official said the missile had been previously launched in July 2016. But this was reported as an Iranian Masudan test. Nine Iranian state-run television showed video footage of a Quram Shah test on September 23, 2017. But U.S. officials told CNN and Fox News there was no indication a ballistic missile had been fired at that time. Additionally, the footage of the test dated back to the failed January 2017 launch. Specifications. The Quram Shah has a reported length of 13 meters, a body diameter of 1.5-2.0 meters, and launch weight of approximately 19,000-26,000 kg.11 According to Iranian officials, the missile has a range of 2. 
0.000 kilometers and is capable of carrying multiple warheads of up to 1,800 kg.12. However, the range may be higher, and the multiple warheads claim is most likely a reference to a submunitions warhead, rather than multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology. The Karam Shah is liquid-fueled and likely two-staged. Iranian media reports claim the missile has radar revading capabilities and terminal guidance.13 if the guidance relies on an older inertial navigation system, however. The Core Amshar's accuracy could be quite poor, approximately 1,500 meters circular error probable. In addition to banning launches of ERB or ICBM class systems, Launches of Iran's developmental Karamshar and some of its existing deployed extended range Nodong class MRBMS also would be banned under such a range payload capability. Approach, as would launches of most if not all SLVS. Thus, Iran would be forced to give up troop training launches of systems it already actively relies upon for its national security, as well as its ability to launch even civil satellites. Limiting SLVS single quote use of propellants to liquids, or just non-storable liquids. Solid propellants provide the most military utility in terms of response time, ease of handling, mobility, and concealability. So denying their use in SLVS would be very significant in limiting the military impact of a breakout. Allowing SLVS to use storable, liquid propellants as all of Iran's and North Korea's current road mobile liquid propellant ballistic missiles, which make up the bulk of their missile inventories, do would still permit an SLV program to provide a breakout capability of substantial military utility.